Hey everybody. Get this out of the way. I'm gonna wait a few minutes while some people hop on. Yes, I do have a full face of makeup on right now because I just did an Instagram video. I'm trying to fix this so it's not in your way. So I have a complete full face of makeup on right now. Um, just cause I was doing the video and I figured I'd leave it on so I could look pretty. So tonight we are going to be doing our February BoxyCharm unboxing. I'm not gonna be doing it in a video. I'm just gonna do it live with you guys. Um, a couple of things, if it sounds kind of loud, I have my nephews over, so we have a lot of kids downstairs right now. <laughs> so just bear with me on that. And again, I am still doing my lives on my phone. So just bear with me for a little bit. I am collecting piece by piece some really awesome gear to amp up my lives and make them look a lot better. So tonight we're going to be doing our BoxyCharm unboxing for February. It is the base box. I have not signed up for the premium yet. I kind of haven't had the drive to sign up for the premium. So if you have the premium, let me know what you think. Like, is it something I should sign up for? I'm really excited that I know March's premium is all Fenty products. And I'm like, ooh, even if I just sign up, for March, like $35 for all that Fenty products, it's bomb. Like that's a good deal. So I don't know, I'm in between. Hi China, hi little cupcake. How are you guys doing tonight? It's Saturday. I have a three day vacation, three day vacation. Gosh, I wish I was on vacation. I have a three day weekend. And we're also going to be discussing tonight kind of a, at work. Aw, what do you, where do you work at? Is it fun at least? <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. It's Saturday, I can't complain. It's cold, still very cold. Um, so I can't wait for that to be over. I'm kind of sick. My little one is kind of sick, so getting through that, but can't complain. So on top of, if you guys, I don't know if you can see the title of my lives, but on top of the BoxyCharm unboxing, we're also gonna be talking about real makeup like makeup in real life versus what you see on the internet so if you have any questions regarding that topic go ahead and comment it in the chat box if you're watching this on replay i'll always comment down below oh i always i do respond but you can always comment down below and just ask me your questions because i think there's a big gap or misunderstanding on how or what the difference is between makeup that you see on the internet on youtube instagram TikTok versus what you see on a daily basis or what people wear. So if you have any questions like that for me, then go ahead and let me know. The front, and I'm looking down here because I'm watching my iPad to see the comments because I can't see them. The front desk at a hotel, I know it's boring. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that it's boring. My aunt did that for a long time. Um, she definitely said it was boring, but she kind of liked that it was kind of laid back. Like during the day was a lot different than nighttime. So she did it as a part-time job and she didn't mind it so much, but it was really boring. Hi, Ray. My reception sucks, but I'm here. Hi, Nicolette. Oh my gosh. I love her. She's so sweet. All right. So we're going to go into the box first and then we can kind of talk through that and talk through the whole makeup real makeup versus like Instagram makeup kind of thing. So this is the boxy charm box that I got. Um, it did not come with a card, like one of those postcards, which I think is so weird, but I can bring up my email. Cause I think that they mailed it. They emailed me an electronic one. I just think the whole thing is weird. I'm starting to get really agitated. Like I stopped getting BoxyCharm because they irritated me down to my last freaking core but then I was like no I'm gonna try it again because I have seen like a lot of great products and now they have the base box the premium and the luxe like they have so many different options but it comes to a point where it's like okay this is really just not worth the headache so yeah I got a virtual insert which kind of just irritates me I don't know why it irritates me it just does I guess it does save on paper and waste and that's good but now I have to like try to scramble to find it on my email so this box I will definitely say I am not super impressed with or happy with because I got like two makeup items so and then the rest is skincare which I enjoy skincare but I'm very picky with my skincare what I like what I don't like 
So it's kind of like, we'll see. We'll see how they go. So the first thing I have here is the Kate Somerville, and this is KX Activate Concentrate. This is a biomimicking peptides, smooth and firm serum. So I would want the actual card in my grubby little hands. Yes, like I, do I have lipstick on my teeth? You guys gotta let me know if I have lipstick on my teeth. Don't, don't let me get all crazy up in here. Um, yeah, right. I definitely agree. Like, I feel like I have to have the card. I don't know why, but this is the serum that I got. And it does say this values for $98. Do you know what question I have? And I was talking about my husband. I was talking with my husband about this the other day. How does BoxyCharm make their money? So for instance, this is $98. My box is $25. Do they get the products for free? Do they get it at a super discount? Like, where are they making the money? Are they like, hey, if you want your stuff in our box to be promoted, you gotta give us some stuff for free. I just don't know where they're making their money to stay afloat. Like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, they have made more box choices, but even so, like they, they've been a base box for the $20, $25 one for a very long time. And I'm just like, I don't understand where they're getting their profit from. I'm very, very interested in knowing. Um, when I first started BoxyCharm, BoxyCharm, oh my God, I can't get it together tonight. When I first started BoxyCharm several years ago, I do know that a lot of their products were not like a lot of known brands. So I figured that they went to indie companies and they got a bunch of stuff for people to try. And then they got it for free because those companies wanted their stuff to be promoted. But like huge brands like Kate Somerville, I know that uh, Natasha Denona has been in these boxes, like really high brands that really probably don't need promotion. So I'm just a little confused on where their money making comes in. Do you know what I mean? So if you know, or you know someone that knows, let me know, cause I need to know. <clears throat> I just got my box, I got monthly makeup, and I didn't get a card. I didn't get a card either. I only got like two brands. I never tried it. it was all right. I was filming my boxy charm video right now. Oh, well, congratulations on filming it, though, but you didn't get a card. So maybe that's a new thing they're doing where they're not sending cards, but they didn't tell anybody. They probably get them at cost or for a big discount, and that way people get to try the products and share the word about it. So that's what I, it has to be something like that, because I can't see a company giving away a whole bunch of stuff for free and then not getting a good return on it. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's a real, real bad thing to do. Um, but as for like what, how they're making their money. I don't know. I'm going to do some research on it because I'm really interested. Maybe I'll even send them an email like, hey, I just want to know. Like you think they'll answer me. They'll probably be like, girl, it's none of your business. So I did get this concentrate and China, you said you got mostly makeup. You're so lucky. I got like all skincare. Wait till you see this. So this is the um, serum. I didn't really do any research yet on what the biomimicking peptides is. It says it's smooth and firm. You can apply it AM to PM, one to two drops on cleansed skin. Warnings, avoid contact with eyes. Usually rinse well with water if irritation. I'm trying to figure out what it says that it does. Targets loss of elasticity and firmness while visibly reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. So what I'm assuming is it tightens your skin and just kind of helps with with like any lines or anything like that going on. I don't really have an issue with fine lines per se or wrinkles, not yet, but I definitely need some help in the smoothing area because I have some serious texture going on, but I am actually about to order an entire line from the, uh, um, not the original, the ordinary. Uh, I'm ordering like six or seven products and I'm gonna be using them for 30 days just to see kind of what it does. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I've read and researched the past week about what it can do for my texture, my bumps. So fingers crossed that it works out because I need something. I've tried everything and I just, I need it. They just want us to get hooked on the makeup and then we gotta spend money on it to get it again. Oh my God, yes, because let me tell you what, um, I don't know, Little Cupcake, what is your actual name if you don't mind me asking, just so I don't have to keep calling you Little Cupcake. 
Um, because if you weren't here last Friday, was it last Friday? No, I uploaded my last boxy charm for January and there was a $107 face cream by Avant. I think that's what it is. I think I have it. Hold on. Here it is. This one by Avant. This is $107. And I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. But let me tell you what, I have put this on every night since I did that unboxing and I love it. The smell is amazing. The feel, like literally, as soon as I put it on my face, it literally feels like I just drank in all of the moisture in the air. Like it literally felt so nice on my skin and I'm like, I can't love this product. It's so expensive. So I put like a little dollop on my hand because I'm like, let's make a spread. Let's make it spread. So it lasts for a long time. I have used it, like I said, since I um did that unboxing and it still has a pretty good amount in there. But again, it's $107. So I'm like, oh, just a little bit out of time. But I really, really, really do love how it feels on my face. I will tell you, I think it has broken my neck out. You can't see right now because I have makeup on. But when I put it down on my neck, it gets itchy. So itchy. Sorry, Chantel. Okay. I just don't want to have to keep calling you a little cupcake. I mean, if you like that, then that's what I'll call you. Yes, I watched that one last night. My boyfriend would kill me if I got that, but I have dry skin. Oh my God, yes. So and my husband, he, you know, he probably thinks about killing me sometimes with the amount that I spend on makeup and skincare, but he loves me anyways. But um, I, I have really, really dry skin, like super, super dry skin. And it's like, no matter what I do, I do drink a lot of water. I take care of my skin. It just is never enough. So I'm trying to find different things and I'm like... I don't want this $107 product to be what works for my skin. I just don't. So this one right here, I did try. Your husband might be a swell dude. Oh, are you? Are you a swell dude? That right there is my husband, guys. Say hello, Steven. So it just has a dropper. It's kind of like yellowy. I used it last night. I put two drops on my skin. It has a really funny smell. Um, I didn't feel like it did anything yet, but like I said, I'm gonna keep using it to see what it does. And I think I'm gonna have to do some research on what peptides do for your skin. So the next thing that we have are the Alamar Cosmetics Complexion Blush Trio. So let's see if I can get these open. And I do not know that brand, and these were retail for $36. They are like a rose goldy packaging. I just kind of bring stuff in and stick it in the back of my vanity. And I like it. <laughs> you know what, right? That's a good idea because I own so many skincare, hair care, makeup things. If he never, like if I never told him or he never saw me walk through the door, he would have no idea like what I've bought. <laughs> or what I've ordered. Cause I also have a PO box. So I could send all of my orders there and he would never know. <laughs> so this one is a bronzer brush. Um, It's kind of bumpy. I don't know. No, no, I would not use it. It's too dense for a bronzing brush for my liking. Um, maybe blush, no, I don't know that I would use it for blush either, but it's gonna soak up any foundation. I don't know, I'll have to figure out what I can use this for. Maybe if I use it more, it'll soften and kind of loosen. Um, but this is just, it's too big, it's too dense, it's too, it's too much for bronzing. I would not use this for bronzing. No thank you, I'll pass, and I'm not really certain why it has those bumpies on the top. So we'll have to figure out what that baby can be used for. And this one is a complexion brush. So this is what I would use for my bronzing brush because it's light and it's angled. So I don't really know what the process went into. Maybe they messed up on which one because I feel like this would be the complexion brush because I could definitely use this for foundation. Like it's pretty stiff. Where this one is, if you look, it's definitely a less dense brush and it is angled. So I don't know, it's kind of weird to me. Let's see, this one is the brightening brush. So either setting powder doo, 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 or highlighter. I'm not using this for highlighter, most definitely setting powder. So I'm gonna go in with the Jaclyn Hill Mood Light. 
By the way, if you guys did not see my comment on this as an update, I, so when I first reviewed this stuff, oh yeah, so I really like this as an under eye setting brush because it fits very nicely under my eye. Like that's perfect. And then I don't mess up my highlighter either. So I hated this in the review. I don't know if you guys have seen it, my Jaclyn Hill highlighter review. Hated it because it really made it look like I had just had put highlighter all over my foundation. But I found out this baby is stunning on bare skin. So for instance, okay, so the whole Instagram makeup versus reality makeup. You will see me on Instagram or on here with a full face of makeup. Like if you were to take a spoon and rub the thing across my face, you're going to get like some real cakey, thick foundation, like a whole lot. That is not what I wear every day. Actually, I don't wear foundation at all. So unless I'm going out somewhere or I'm on live, Instagram, TikTok, doing my social media stuff, I don't wear foundation at all. So what I do now is I either put a face oil on or I put a moisturizer on. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try this out on my bare skin. And then I take this and I put some in the lid and I swirl it around and I just literally all over my face everywhere. It literally looks like my skin is glowing. So this, I do recommend if you have it to try it without foundation because it gave me on top of my foundation, it gave me that cakey highlighter nastiness feel and I hated it but then I went back with just no makeup just a moisturizer and I'm telling you I had people telling me my skin looks so dewy and so glowy so I'm telling you try it without foundation if you have not so we're gonna go into the next item which is touch and soul so this one retails for $32 this is an ultra hydrating priming skin balm with a sensationally smooth texture that melts into your skin and creates an ultimate glow that lasts throughout the day. So this is their Pretty Filter Glassy Skin Balm. Um, I have a primer from them that I don't really use. I know a lot of people love it, but it's just too um, silicone based for my skin because I do have super dry skin. So I just don't really go to it. Uh, this is... I mean, it's cute. It's cute. I think it opens this way. I don't want to spill it over. So it does open like this. That's not very long. Like, I feel like that's not going to last you a long time. And it's, this is definitely full size. And this is $32. Hmm. Doesn't seem like a lot. It is a thick product. I just put it on my hand. Let's see here. It smells nice. Do not mind my red splotches for my eczema. I have eczema so bad. I don't know what to do or how to get rid of it. So it definitely does give my skin a nice glowy look. But I feel like, mm, I don't know. I don't feel like it did too much. I feel like my moisturizer would do exactly the same. So I don't... And it, has a lot of perfume in it. So that's one thing that I, when it comes to skincare, I don't want all that jazz, that jazzy smelling, yummy, scented. I don't need all that in my life. I don't want it. I don't need it. It irritates my skin. So the next thing that I have is the Facial Radiance Pad by um, First Aid Beauty. These help exfoliate, tone, and brighten. And I believe these are $16. And I've actually gotten these before. They are $16. And I will tell you from personal experience, these have never done anything for my skin at all. They, I don't feel like they do. I feel like it's just a wet pad that I'm putting all over my face. Like I don't feel, you know, when you use something, you feel clean or you feel like it did something. I, I don't get that vibe off of it, if that makes sense. Hmm. I got that in a boxy charm a couple months ago, I feel like. Have your kids ever messed up one of your palettes and how did you react? So China, I believe that the Touch and Soul did come in a boxy charm. The if you're talking about the primer that I just mentioned, it did come in a boxy charm a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it's this one. Hold on, I'll pull it out. Yep. So the no pro no problem or something like that. Um, it did come in a boxy charm quite a while ago before I canceled it the first time. Uh, I just didn't like it, but um 
Chantel, yes. <laughs> so I have actually not had very many palettes ruined, only one, surprisingly enough. So I have three daughters. One is nine, she's nine. <laughs> One is four and then the other is actually almost three months old. So my nine-year-old has been around makeup since she was like probably three or four because I've been doing makeup for a long time. She does makeup very well, which is it, it, with for her age, it's very amazing. She treats makeup very well. She always has. She's never gotten into my makeup. My four-year-old, on the other hand, it has been around makeup since she's born. And she has used my lipstick to color on walls. She destroyed my Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. And a friend of mine actually rebought it for me because I cried. Um, I came up the stairs. She was up here with my husband. And he was on the games. And he didn't do it intentionally not to pay attention to her. But I still hold a grudge. Um, so I came up the stairs. And I'm like, what is all over the stairs? Like, what's all over the carpet? And I look up and she's covered. I think she was like two or three at the time, covered in my eyeshadow. And I'm like, oh God, no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 no. So I run to the palette and literally it is dug out, shat, like there's just shadow everywhere. And I just sat there and I cried. I couldn't yell at her. She was a baby at the time. And even if she wasn't, it's unintentional. Yes, the palette was $65, sure. But I definitely was like one of those things where you can't really like express your anger or upset because she is so little. So you just cry. Um, so that was the only time that that's ever happened to me. They actually get a lot of my makeup. So whenever I do declutters and stuff like that, I will let them go through before I give it to my siblings or my um, friends. I let them go through and pick out what they want because I feel like if I give them their own, then they will essentially leave mine alone and they do. So they'll come in here every once in a while and borrow some lipsticks and stuff, but they put it back. But she does have a tendency to kind of use my lipstick to draw all over her face. And I have to tell her, please stop doing that. P please stop, you're beautiful, I love it, but stop. Um, so I've only ever had that experience once and it was probably the worst experience. So hopefully baby Emma does not do that and she's just like, no mom, I'm perfect and I'll leave all of your things alone. So I did, I was very upset when that happened, um, but it's only happened to me once, thank God. Um, so back to these pads, these Radiance pads from First Aid Beauty. If you guys have had them, let me know how you feel. I just don't feel like they do anything to my skin. Like, I just feel like nothing. I feel like if I pay money for something, I want to feel it work. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm crazy. I probably am crazy. So the last product, that's it. That's all I got in here. That's it. I love the First Aid Beauty. I use the Ultra Repair Cream. I do have the ultra repair cream, the ultra repair cream. I just got that from TJ Maxx the other day. They're so good. I tried the pads, but they're okay. You're right. So I like that ultra repair cream. I feel like it, um, it's not like a regular moisturizer. It's so weird how it feels and it feels so nice. Like it feels like it immediately soaks into my skin, but it's not that tight immediate soaks into my skin. I really, really do like it. I just literally got it the other day. And I paid, I think it was like $9.99, $10.99, something like that for it. But I really do like that one. It's just these pat. I don't know what, I don't know what happened. I didn't like them before. I don't like them now. I do use the exfoliator from the same brand. So, and I like that too. So I feel like this brand is like a hit or miss kind of thing. Because I got their lip, they had like a a lip balm or a healing lip balm because I get really bad chapped lips because of all the lipstick and stuff that I wear constantly and I'm constantly wiping my lips. Um, I've caused severe damage to my lips. They do not produce natural oil in any way. So I try to find like a lot of like moisturizing, healing lip products and I got one from them and I didn't really like it either. My cat ruins my big James. Oh my God. I feel you, LL, she clawed it and was using it as a scrub. Oh no, oh my gosh. A friend of mine told me that her dog did that. I think it was her dog, maybe it was her cat, I don't remember. Did that to her Jaclyn Hill palette when she, she had waited to get it, she finally got it. And I don't know if it was her cat or her dog, but her pet had jumped on it and like dug into the pans. And I was like, oh, you poor thing. 
I keep debating on BoxyCharm. I go back and forth. Oh, girl, me too. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm so excited about what I'm going to get. And then other times I'm like, really? Is this what we're doing, BoxyCharm? Like, this, pop, this box, I'm just irritated. Like, I do expect to have... And I hate to say expect because I don't want to sound like I'm entitled, but I, I do want a makeup item, a lipstick, a highlighter, a bronzer, anything. It doesn't always have to be a palette, mascara, anything. But when you send me a whole bunch of skincare stuff, I'm just like, what if I couldn't use any of this? Most of this I won't use, but what if I couldn't? Like, what if someone has sensitive skin? They can't use this kind of stuff. So to me, it's like, I don't really want a lot of skincare. I don't mind if I get like one or two skincares. Like this skincare was really nice. But like these two right here, I'm not going to use. So I have one item out of my box so far that I want to try. May not work out, but I want to try it. The brushes are okay. I mean, I guess that's a makeup item. Sure. But this is the only physical makeup item that I got. And this is the Pure 4 in 1 Correcting Primer which I will probably also not be able to use. So energize and rescue with aloe, coconut water, and probiotics. <gasps> Actually, I might be able to use it. It's silicone free. So silicone really, really irritates my skin. Um, that's why I can't do the touch and soul. I can use it sometimes, but it just can't be a whole lot. Like the uh, professional primer that a lot of people use, I can't use that because it just makes my skin feel yucky. So this is $17. Oh, so it's like a hydrating. I want to know how it's a correcting primer. So I do have some discoloration on my hand. So I guess, no, it did nothing. It smells like coconuts. It smells really nice. It is very hydrating, but for correcting purposes, no. I wouldn't say that it corrects anything. I think it has shimmer in it. I'm trying to look here and see if it has some kind of shimmer. Four in one correcting primer, Energize and Rescue will become your must have beauty tonic and primer for your best and worst skin days. Packed with good for you skin ingredients such as probiotics, aloe, caffeine, and coconut water, this primer helps smooth and soothe your skin. So I have very textured hands and it didn't really smooth it. It definitely gave it <coughs> sorry guys it definitely gave it like more of a glowy look and shiny but I really wouldn't say that it smooths it so I don't know we'll try this one I will try this one because it doesn't seem that bad but as for the rest that's that is my box and I'm so disappointed and honestly it makes me like wonder if I should just keep going because I know that I canceled for a while and then I was like, I had like the FOMO <laughs> where I'm like, oh, I'm missing those things. But in all honesty, if I sit down and I think about it, I'm like, okay, it's $25 a month. That's not bad. Here's the thing. If I'm paying $25 a month and throughout the year, I only wind up using or keeping two to three products, that's a lot of money that I'm spending on stuff that I'm not using or that I don't really want, where I can just take that same amount of money and get more items from Ulta or Sephora or wherever that I prefer. So that's where I kind of stand where I'm just like, do I really want this? Do I not? I know that so many people do BoxyCharm unboxings. So I don't really require it for my YouTube channel because I feel like that's something you guys can get at a surplus. Like you go and just YouTube search BoxyCharm unboxing. Believe me, y'all gonna get a lot. So for me, it's not really something that I require for my channel. It's nice to have to let you guys know what I got. But at the same time, most people who come to my channel have BoxyCharm or they know what it is or they've had it and they've canceled it. So for me, it's just trying new products where so I'll take like this one and I'll do like a skincare video or something featuring this one just to kind of let you guys know or update you on what is happening or going down with this one. So I just, to me, these, this box was like me. It is not good. <laughs> um, and I just really, I don't know. I just wish that I kind of didn't get this one. I, do you know if they have like a, um, like a pause? 
Does that make sense where you can like pause for a month if you know what you're getting? I don't know if they have that or not. I'll have to take a look. All right. So that is what is in my box. I'm going to... What am I going to try? Oh, what I wanted to try something. Oh, this one. I wanted to put this on my skin. Oh, okay. Let me see. So it is thick. It's a thick serum. My box is okay. I like the eyeshadow palette and the brushes. I would cancel, but I paid for it for six months. Oh, no. What eyeshadow palette did you get, China? So this is like a, it's like a jelly. Like that's what it feels. It feels kind of like a jelly feeling. That's how I am. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that would be nice. Others I'm like, eh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I really do want to sign up for that premium one for March because like I said in the beginning, you're getting all Fenty. I think it's like six Fenty items and one of them is her eyeshadow palette. So for me, I do like Fenty, but I have the lip gloss and I think two other products I might have I have to go back and look at the sneak peeks but I'm just like it's a good deal if you don't have a lot of Fenty or you want to try Fenty that's an amazing deal $35 for six full products and one of them is an entire palette that's really really good if you just want the palette I will tell you at Sephora right now until Monday it's on sale for $29. So do not pay $35. Just go to Sephora and get it for $29. But I have several of her lip items. So I have to check and see. But I need to get your guys' opinion. So I, when I started BoxyCharm, I don't know when you guys started years ago. Like, I want to say they had just started their, their company. It was really, it's really not that good. Um, but they would not sneak peek everything like they would sneak peek a few things that you were getting in the box but then the rest of it was kind of like a surprise and now I feel like they tell you everything you're getting so I'm just like what is the point of the box if I'm gonna know what I'm getting before I get it because that makes me not want to subscribe to the box you got the mm, that's the eyeshadow palette I wanted in mine you got the iconic London one and the store you got two eyeshadow palettes in the base box or do you have the premium? Oh, you don't like the storybook fairy tale? I've never used the storybook cosmetics. Um, I've heard good things, but I've never actually went and bought anything from them. You got two eyeshadow palettes? You're so lucky. <laughs> I got a bunch of crap skincare that I don't want. It's not crap. It's expensive. It's nice, but I still didn't want it. So you are super lucky because I super feel like I got screwed but we're gonna start um now that we've done the box start talking about like um instagram makeup or youtube makeup in the base box really huh i wonder why you got to maybe i'm missing something let me go on my card and see if i'm missing something nope nope i was not meant to get any of that because apparently boxy charm hates me but <laughs> Back to what I was saying. So I want to start talking about Instagram makeup or internet makeup versus reality versus your everyday makeup and all of that. Yes, Amanda, that's exactly like I hate the idea of the mystery being taken from me. Like I want to be able to be surprised and be like, oh, like what I got. My network kicked me out. But yeah, I'm one year. My one year old decided to get my Zulu palette when her dad was watching her. And he hid it from me. And one day she broke my glasses and I found it after that. I cried. I don't mean to laugh because of the makeup being messed up. I swear I don't. Um, I laugh because your husband hid it. Um, because that is definitely something husbands would do. The storybook was this month's bonus to join. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say, how do you get two palettes, you lucky duck? Um, so yeah, I definitely, I cried too, Chantel, when she ruined my Huda palette because at that time, like we were kind of in a rough spot. So a couple years ago, we had some things personally go on and it put us into like a really like tight money financial situation. 
So a lot of things were just really going bad. And so I finally, everything started to finally get better and like finances were changing. And I was like, you know what? I haven't bought me any makeup in a long time. I'm gonna go ahead and buy me this really nice palette. So then when she ruined it, I, it just kind of put me into like a place where I just didn't wanna be and I just cried. And most people would be like, it's just makeup. But when you're passionate over something or even because it symbolized something to me that we had gotten out of that storm and we you know, were back to where we needed to be, it just kind of it hit me differently than if it were just like right now and she randomly messed up a palette that I could now go out and rebuy. But at that time I was just like, oh my God, $65 down the drain. And actually one of my friends bought it for me for my birthday a couple months after that. So I cherish that palette now. I still have that palette, but I will cherish that palette forever because she went out of her way to get that for me because she knew how much it meant to me when my daughter had ruined it. I don't think I put in the code for it though. Oh, that's crazy. Hey, two palettes though. I mean, it sucks that you don't really like that one, but two palettes, that ain't bad. That is not bad. I'm trying to see here. Not my color story. I'd send it to you, but I swatched it. Yeah, that's fine. What, um, is it the blue one? I think I saw someone else on, on YouTube showing that. I think it's the blue one. I've seen Storybook Cosmetics in like um, Ulta, I think, but I've just never really been like, it's too bulky and kind of weird for me to put it into my collection like it's the same thing with Jeffree Star's palettes they're so beautiful but sometimes it irritates me because it's like what am I gonna do with an octagon Jeffree what am I gonna do like all of my palettes are square or rectangle I don't have any weird shaped palettes I used to have some circles but I don't even have those anymore so I'm just like please stop with the crazy shaped palettes I just need a regular palette for my OCD to just fit where I need it to fit. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. For some reason, my comments are like loading really slow. So bear with me if I don't see them. No, it was funny after, but I was pregnant. So I was so sad because she killed the green. Oh, I bought it for the green. Oh my God. I love green shadows. I went to grab it because I needed it a way to not care about my glasses but yeah oh that sucks so bad no I just I definitely got really emotional about it so it just and that's like the only thing that she's ever messed up like that but I do really hold my makeup dear if that makes sense I mean I know that sounds silly to some people but it is just like any other passion it, it's important to me um you know, if people who collect stamps, if someone came through and spilt water all over their stamps, they'd probably cry and be upset too. So it's a collection for me. It's pieces that I have designated money and time into getting and collecting. So I totally get it. It's okay to be emotional about makeup. Anyone who tells you it isn't, tell them to just shove it. Yeah, it's the blue one. And yes, it's annoying thing palette. Yeah, it's just like, it's so, they're pro, like, they're, I don't know. They're weird. I don't, I don't prefer, prefer, I don't prefer their um, palettes just because they're kind of bulky and weird. Not a, not a fan. Um, but I do know that I have heard really good things about them. I'm just not a fan. So, but Instagram versus reality. Let's talk about it. So I have had a lot of people who have DM'd me on Instagram and told me, you know, do you wear, like asked me, like, do you wear makeup all the time? Uh, you know, how do you keep your skin from this and that? So here's the tea. Like I said a few minutes ago, I don't wear foundation unless I'm on social media because it's, it's what I'm trying to do or build as my career. Um, you, if you were to run into me, at the store, at the mall, at the gas station. I can promise you, I don't look like this. And I can promise you most people on the internet, YouTubers, Instagrammers, whatever, they don't look like this. Like the way that I do my everyday makeup is so different versus what I do on camera. So my everyday makeup, I do not do my brows. If I do, it'll be a quick pencil fill in. And then that's that. I wear a lip gloss or a lip oil. 
you will not catch me with a lipstick on unless it's like a random day that I was just like, oh, let me put on lipstick. Um, I now wear the Jaclyn Hill palette or powder over my um, moisturizer. But other than that, I don't wear blush. I don't, I have natural rosy cheeks. So that kind of is just a thing. Um, I wear a little shimmer shadow just to give my eyes or I'll put like a taupe or um, like a nude shade on just to make my eyes one color because I do have darker circles on my eyes. And I put on some mascara. You're not about to catch me wearing lashes to work. I have done it before. It's not fun. I get up at four o'clock in the morning. So for me to do this to my skin or my face every day for work, because a lot of people are like, well, why don't you wear makeup to work? I'd have to get up at like two o'clock sis. And I don't want to do that because I already don't go to bed super early. So it's like I'd have two hours of sleep. So I do love makeup and I wear makeup all the time when I'm on camera. I play with it at home. But when it comes to like my everyday reality, you're not going to catch me wearing all this. It's just not going to happen. And another thing is if I were, so I have some people who have asked me, you know, what do you do to get your like bronzer and your highlighter and your blush to stand out so much? I'm going to tell you. Here's the secret. <clears throat> I work on base. Um, I just do like administrative stuff, right? But um, so for to get, have you ever watched a YouTube tutorial and you do exactly what they tell you to do and you use exactly what they tell you to use, no exceptions, you use it and it still doesn't come out how you see it on camera? Couple of reasons why. One, there's all kinds of real life, like real time filters. So even when you're filming, there are filters, okay? So they're not just photo filters, um, but there are real time filming filters that you can put on to smooth your skin, to make you the color look better. And I use them, everyone uses them. I don't put people down for using them or for photo editing, I do it as well. Um, but when it comes to the makeup and getting it to really show on camera with all these lights, I have to put a crap ton, crap ton of makeup on my face. Like if you were to see me right now standing next to me or standing in front of me, you would be like, ooh, ooh, that's, that's a lot of makeup. That's a lot. Um, because it, it is. It's like way more than what I would put on if I was going out even to like, a bar or a party or an event, I still wouldn't put on as much as I do for the camera. So even like for foundation, when you watch my videos and I kind of cut out, cause I don't want to sit here and pounce on my face. I put so much foundation on my face so it comes out on the camera. So when YouTubers or Instagrammers, they want it to be picked up by the camera. They want it to be picked up and so you can see it and the lights aren't flushing it out. It's a lot. So when you're doing the tutorial, you have to keep that in mind that it is not going to look 100% like how they have it because you're not putting that much on. I would never recommend putting that much on. All the powder and concealer and contour that you see Instagrammers put on their face, don't do that. Don't, do not do that because in real life, you're going to be like, what the fuck happened to my face? Excuse my language. But like as much powder as you see me put on my face, I don't do that in real life. I have super dry skin. If I were to walk out in public from afar, people would be like, okay, look at her makeup. If they came to have a conversation with me up close, they'd be like, ooh, ooh, someone needs to exfoliate. You got some dry skin going on. So you have to keep that in mind when you are following these tutorials or like the other day I was looking for eyebrow tutorials, just kind of going through YouTube. And a lot of them, <laughs> are of people who have completely full brows, like from one end to the other. They got stunning eyebrows. And they're like, this is how you go from no brows to full brow. No, sis, no, <laughs> because your no brows are not my no brows. Like I have barely any hair here. And if you look really, really close, I have to fill that in. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, well you kind of go a little bit dark on the end, like the inner part of it. Well, yeah, I have to because I have like no hair there. So even if I did like light strokes, it just doesn't look right. They kind of look like they're balding. So I do have to go a little bit darker there. Um, and for Instagram, I'm going to touch on Facetune. Facetune. I use Facetune. I know a lot of people who use Facetune. 
I just think that Facetune has become a very, very overused app. So I believe that if you are putting makeup pictures out there or you're doing it, you know, for yourself, for a company, for your job, whatever it is, you want it to be 100%. You want to retouch that photo. You don't want to just put a photo out that has not good lighting or you have a lot of texture or there's a lot going on. Whatever you have to do to edit it is fine. But there's a difference between retouching your photo and completely re-editing your photo especially when you're promoting products. So here's my biggest thing in our community and the beauty community is when a influencer or whatever you want to call them, YouTuber, promoter, whatever, promotes a product and in that photo, they completely face tune their makeup. So I had, there's this one girl who she's always on my trending page. I don't know her name. And even if I did, I would not put it out. She promotes a lot of products um, and she gets paid to promote a lot of these products and in her like in her photos, you can 110% tell that that is not the actual color or pigmentation or shade of the palette or whatever it is that she's used. And that to me feels like fraud. Like I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like if you're going to sell something to somebody, you should probably be as honest as possible about it. So I do edit my photos you will see that I will smooth my skin. I ha That's fine. I have to. I have really textured skin. I don't want a crop photo out there. But what I will never do is go over my eyeshadow and brighten it and brighten it and brighten it and brighten it and paint it on basically and tell you, oh my God, that's all. It was so pigmented. No, don't do that. Don't do that because so when I see those photos on Instagram, I immediately scroll by. I don't even want to look at them because what you're doing is you're not only feeding false hope to people, but you're also selling them lies. And for the younger crowd who, you know, the older, more mature people, we're kind of like, sis, we know that's photoshopped. But for the younger teenagers, they look at that and they try to achieve that. And then they get upset and they're like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. And it really eats them alive because they think that it's them that there's something wrong. But what they don't understand is that video or that photo was edited for three hours before they put it up. So if you're gonna sell something or you're gonna promote something, find a retouch the photo. It's another thing to completely face tune the colors or edit the colors on or something like that. I just, I am not, I don't agree with that at all. It's not something that I find to be a very honest practice. I know that some people like it and that's fine. They're good to look at, but when it comes to a product, so the palette, the 35i palette from Morphe, I've seen a lot, a lot. Yes, right, that's exactly what I was about to touch on, the Icy palette. I, before I bought it, I looked at 35i palette, hashtag 35i palette on Instagram, and I'm like, oh my God, these, these colors are, they're just stunning. They're absolutely stunning. I get that palette and I used white primer. I did what I was told and it still didn't give me the payoff that you see in those photos. So it's one thing to go, okay, well this, it looks a little dark over here. Let me kind of lighten it a little bit. That's fine. But when you're completely changing, like I'm going to show you guys, oh, I can't show you guys. I don't have my phone. I'm recording on my phone. Let me see if I can get here to Instagram this way. And I'm gonna try to block out her information, but I wanna show you this one photo under that hashtag that literally, I don't know why it ate me alive so much, but I got so upset about it. And I was just like, I can't believe somebody would promote this palette saying that it does that and it does not. And it does not and I've used it. And now some of them, if you go under there, they're true to color and they do look really, really nice. So I will show you one that is true to color. So this one right here is most definitely true to color. So you could tell that they lightened up the shadow just a bit, but honestly, they didn't overly face tune it. They showed you what the pigmentation looked on their skin tone. There are quite a few that are like that, but there's some that I want to show and I can't without saying, without showing their name because they have their, dang it. 
I'm going to screenshot it and edit it real quick so you guys can't see their name. I just don't want to, I don't want any negativity towards them. I just want to use them as an example because the problem is we're promoting to an entire group of people and selling lies. That's what it is. You're selling lies. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it creative, whatever, but it is lies. You're lying. And it kind of irritates me 100% to my core. And I can't find that photo. Duh. And like a lot of people are like, well, I don't understand why that upsets you. Well, it upsets me because I could never, I guess, tell like people that follow me or, you know, promote something that isn't good and then lie to make it look good. Cause you're, you're just, you're lying. You can call it whatever you want. You're lying. It irritates me. It's one thing. And then people go, well, they do it in magazines. Yes. Yes, they do do it in magazines. But here's the thing. I know, and most people know, that a magazine is going to lie to me. It's going to Photoshop the body. It's going to Photoshop the face. It's going to Photoshop the skin. I can 100% guarantee that every photo in a magazine is Photoshopped. However, and that's for like campaigns or what whatnot, but I trust people that I follow to give me a very accurate or close to accurate um here we go color representation of a palette that they're trying to get me to buy because the problem is if I buy that palette and I used your code and now you made money off of me and I find out that you lied I'm gonna be pissed off ah Chantel I ordered that palette. I was in between when I did my anti haul slash wish list and I ordered it anyways. <laughs> um, I do want to try it. I want to see. I've seen a lot of people review it and say they really liked it. I can honestly tell you I, I'm in between. So I have a lot of eyeshadows that are very similar, very similar. But I just feel like when it comes to Morphe palettes, I feel like they do a lot better work on their collabs. So I really like to buy the collabs because I'm like, okay, well, they put more effort, especially when it comes to Jaclyn Hill. Like her palette, her palette was pretty bomb, her first one. Like I still have it. I don't use it very often. But it, it was pretty bomb. Like, I can't sit here and lie and say that it wasn't because it most definitely was. But I also feel like they should have that quality across the board. Does that make sense? Does anyone else feel that way? Like, that they kind of, um, I don't know how to put it. They uh, make better quality? Is that what I'm looking for? I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. I'm trying to edit this photo so I can show you guys without. And I don't know how to do that. I really wish that I knew how to use this stupid iPad because I really sometimes cannot. Okay, well, I don't know how to use this. This is the best I'm going to be able to get. All right, so we're going to show this photo. This is one of the edited photos right here. So it is extremely edited because I've used all of those colors and not a single one of those. It's a beautiful look. But not a single one of those colors actually come out that bright. And then here's another one. And this one is on Morphe's page. So if you look here, this is 110% Photoshopped, face tuned, whatever you want. So I have a look up with this green. It's not that green. This blue, I did live last Saturday. And if you were here, we all know how that turned out. It did not turn out that well. It took forever for me to even pick up pigmentation. When I first put it on my eye, it was, it just was crap. So I just want basically people to understand the difference in what they see online versus what they actually would see in person. Don't base what you do on your makeup or your makeup tips or tricks. You can kind of take their technique and use that. But when it comes to how it actually shows up or how it actually applies, it's going to be very different 
than if you were actually sitting in front of them. Like if you, when I tell you guys, if you saw how much I had to actually put on my face to get this little bit of blush that's showing right now to show up, you would be surprised. You'd be like, girl, that's too much blush. Like if I were to take a photo, my skin looks disgusting. So it's all in how we get it to show up on camera. It isn't intended to actually be worn that way. Um, I know a lot of people who will like wear this like full blown. It doesn't even swatch that pigmented. No, it does not. So to me, it was like Morphe. I know you did not just put this 110% edited photo on your Instagram. It's a lie. So it just, those things really irritate me when it comes to makeup. Um, I will tell you one more thing. And if you guys do it, don't hate me. This is personal opinion. I don't understand the trending makeup trends. Does that make sense? Okay, so instead of your everyday, this is makeup, um, you have like people who are like painting like eyeshadow like this across their face and like hearts and X's and crazy I get that or clouds that's another one I get that those are supposed to be like editorial or like for show I don't really understand them so if you guys do them that do not take this to offense I don't mind it's your face I'm just confused because when I want to look for makeup looks like someone did a valentine's makeup tutorial and they painted hearts all over their face <laughs> And now, if that's an editorial thing, okay, I understand. But if I'm coming to you for a Valentine's Day look, I don't want to paint hearts all over my face. I don't want to go to dinner with pink hearts painted across my face. I just want something more realistic and I feel like we have shifted, the makeup community has shifted from more realistic makeup to more studio, editorial dramatic special effects kind of makeup and it's like what happened to your everyday glam smoky eyes beautiful pops of color I mean look at my I have bright pink lips on today so I don't I'm not against like bright colors but I'm very confused on where the beauty community is going because I'm sitting here like this is borderline Halloween makeup and I'm not going to do that on a daily basis. I don't know anyone who does do that on a daily basis. So I get confused. <laughs> um, so if you can give me a little insight on that, that would be fantastic. Yes, right. I don't, I don't get it. Like, I mean, maybe it's just a trending thing. I know the clouds are a trending thing, but I just don't understand why people do it. <laughs> um, I'm not, there's no hate. There's no shade. I just, don't understand um maybe some clarification would be great if you're watching this on the replay again do not take this to offense just educate me on why people are doing it um so hello so that is another thing um let's see real verse internet makeup i'm trying to think of things that i've been asked i get a lot of questions in my um instagram dm believe it or not of like my makeup or like a lot of them will be like, how do you get your, you know, your skin to look so smooth with all that foundation and stuff you put on? That is most definitely editing. I will 100% guilty as charged. Um, I do smooth my skin or I use the healing tool because if you look here, look, you can see it. I have extremely textured skin right now. Usually I don't, but for the past like four or five months, I don't know if it's because of my pregnancy and like everything had changed in my skin and my hormones and all of that jazz. But something happened to my face and when I take photos, it does not look this good. It looks like someone literally just drew bumps all over my face. This is my face now in a freaking painting. I hate that trend. Yes, and the thing is, right, I'm sitting here like, I'm not really questioning why you're doing that. My more, I'm questioning who is wearing that. Are y'all wearing that to work? Are you wearing it to like school? Where are you wearing this? Because if I were to walk up in my job, and my job's pretty laid back, it's a very professional setting, but it's very laid back. If I were to walk up in there with pink hearts or stars or X's painted all over my, they'd be like, 
you wouldn't be drug tested today. What is going on with you? Um, so I'm just very confused. I know that it's artistic and I'm not like shaming anyone for it. I just don't understand it. And maybe it's because I'm old. I don't know. But I'm just like, that's not really what I meant when I said <coughs> I want a Valentine's Day look. I meant maybe like some pink here or something. But I mean, it is, it's trendy, man. If you go on the trending page of Instagram, it is all over there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. I, I don't, I'm not doing that. I, don't, I just don't, I don't really fall into a lot of the trending things anyways, because I find that that is disappointing. So a big trend is to put six pounds of concealer under your eye and then bake it for an hour with another six pounds of setting powder. And I will tell you, it's not good for you. Don't do it. It doesn't make your makeup look good. It makes your makeup look cakey and bad. So if you under here, if you touch under here, um, I don't recommend touching your face, but if you do, if you touch under here, you'll notice that it is usually dry, not like dehydrated, but it's a drier part of your face compared to everywhere else. You actually don't produce very much oil if any at all down here so when you're putting concealer on if you're already dry or you already have like lines and texture down there and you put on concealer and then you put on setting powder it's going to accentuate the dryness the texture the lines so on camera i do that but if i were to use a concealer in real life i actually don't set it at all um and i know people are probably like oh my god you don't set your concealer no i don't actually um i set it on camera because I do feel like visually it looks better but I can tell you right now if you ever get a my lipstick is like leaking over here if you ever get a um like a concealer that tells you this is a creaseless concealer none of them are creaseless the only time your concealer is going to be creaseless is if you have no lines if you have no fine lines you have no wrinkles you have no texture what's going to crease nothing if you have lines there no matter what you do is going to be there another thing is a lot of people will tell me oh you can cover your texture up with this or that no you can't you cannot fix texture with texture the only way to fix texture fine lines wrinkles is to take care of your skin and sometimes even if you're taking care of your skin it's just how your skin is it just it's not that it's a terrible thing. Like people have acne and people are like, well, if you just do this, your acne will go away. Well, no, sometimes acne is a genetic issue that is in their body and they take care of it and they do treat it, but you can't make it go away. So when people are like, oh, your skin's so bumpy, not just to me, but to other people, it's like, well, yeah, that's their skin. And it's like, well, you know, they compare it to like Jacqueline Hill for Christ's sake, I'm sorry. I don't like to be negative, no drama, but I'm going to say this. When she does her videos and she's like, this is the way that I do my makeup for a no cakey smooth look. If you look at her skin before she put, puts makeup on, she has no fine lines. She has no wrinkles. She has fillers to cover that and that's fine. I don't have anything against fillers. She literally has the smoothest skin. I don't really know if it's hydrated. You can't tell that by camera, but it doesn't look dry. Um, so when she's like, yeah, this is what I use for my fine lines and wrinkles. I'm like, stop lying to these people. You don't have any fine lines or wrinkles. Be proud of having beautiful skin. God, if I had beautiful skin, I would tell everyone on camera every time. Hi, thank you for coming back to my channel. I'm Jamie with the perfect skin. Like Jeffree Star will tell you, I have good skin and he has no shame in it. So for them to promote something to cover textured skin really does bother me because the problem is you're not educating the community or people who are watching on actual proper makeup facts. I guess it's what it's called, but you can't cover texture with texture. If you put makeup on top of texture, it is going to actually accentuate it rather than cover it. You can fix color. You can fix your pores with like throwing on some pore filling primer. But when it comes to texture, you can get rid of dry patches by exfoliating and moisturizing. Texture is not something that you can get rid of that way. And I also did hear, Ray, that um, microdermabrasion and microneedling is actually really good for texture. I just haven't gone and done it because it freaks me out. 
I don't know why it freaks me out. It just does. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do a chemical, I guess, way of doing that um, with the ordinary stuff and see how that works because it's supposed to penetrate like underneath and get rid of it. So we'll see if it doesn't, then I will have to go with the microneedling or the microabrasion because it's just, I don't know what's happening with my skin and people, you know, a lot of people, I'll get, I get nasty comments. I get, I get all kinds of stuff, you know, and that's just kind of what comes with the territory of what I do. And that's okay. Um, it doesn't really bother me per se, but I'm just like, I sit there and I think like, do you understand what you're saying? Like, do you really know, are you really educated on makeup and how it works? Or do you think because you watch a couple YouTubers and you throw on some makeup, you can tell other people how to do things that you don't know what you're talking about. And that is a big problem that we have, I feel like in this community is that we're all, as soon as we own an eyeshadow palette, we're makeup artists. Well, no, well, makeup artists go to school, they are certified, they take these classes in education. You can be a makeup enthusiast, you can be a makeup lover, but you're not a makeup artist. If you didn't go to school and you don't actually do that, it doesn't make you a makeup artist because you can put eyeshadow on because the technique isn't there. So it really, when people are like, well, she could get rid of her texture or she could get rid of this if she just did this. It's like, you understand that that's not really how it works. So when I do a tutorial, I do try to be as true to what I'm doing as possible. Um, but like I said, I don't contour. I know when I watch Instagram videos and they like draw all over their face and their contour, I'm just like, when you're done wasting product, let me know. You don't need all that. It's unnecessary. So for me, I will bronze and it kind of acts as a contour because I don't use a shimmer bronzer. I do use a matte bronzer. Um, I don't feel that it's necessary to cake my face with foundation and then contour and then primer, or um, not primer, then bronzer, then blush. It becomes too much. It's too many layers. It's too many mixture of products and cream and powders and it gets cakey and you can't get rid of that. A chemical, I use the chemical peel pads every other day. I heard that those are really good, but I'm also afraid that they're going to hurt my skin. I tried a retinol one time and it gave me chemical burn. So I'm really, really cautious, I guess, on chemical exfoliants. And I micro needle most days. What do you use to micro needle? Do you do it yourself? You don't go to a dermatologist? Then use a chill jade roller with the serum after I micro needle. Does it hurt? I know that sounds like a weird question, but does it hurt? Because if it hurts, I'm not going to do it. My makeup is smearing. <clears throat> so like another thing, real verse fake, if you look at my lips, look at that. Well, not this, this is coming off, but I have lines. I have fine lines in my lips. Most people do. Um, and people will do like tutorials or something, how to get rid of that butthole effect that's literally what they call it on your lips where they're wrinkly and stuff you can't unless you get filler you can't I think that people misunderstand what makeup is actually for or what it actually does and what it doesn't do makeup is not a miracle worker it cannot change your face it cannot make you thinner it cannot make your texture go away it can't make your skin less dry it can't make it less oily well I guess mattifying stuff can help with that but your skin will still be oily underneath all of that lipstick cannot make your lips look like you don't have lines I've used so many products like smoothers and primers and all that exfoliators that are supposed to like make your lips look like they have no lines I can tell you out of all of them none have succeeded. So you have to take those into account when you're looking at makeup and you're doing tutorials. And I only bring this up because I do have a lot of questions in my DM about stuff like this and like, how do they achieve that? And they tried doing this and it didn't work. You have to remember it's the internet. It is not real life. And I hate to say that because this is what I do. Um, but it's just not. And here lately, I have followed less, um, more popular YouTubers and followed more smaller YouTubers because I feel like they're more genuine and they show you a more realistic approach to makeup and how makeup is used because they're still on that smaller end 
where if you, I kind of stay away from Instagram when it comes to makeup tutorials because I feel like those are just for dramatic purposes. So, and I find that they, they waste a lot of products. So when you're sitting here and you're pumping like 60 million pumps and I've done it occasionally, you're, you're wasting a lot of products. So imagine if that person is posting a video every day how much product they're just digging out. Now, if you're giving free product, that's fine, but it's still kind of wasteful. And I really hope that most people don't take that seriously and dig into their primer and put it all over their face. But you never know. Some people, they take it to heart and they know. I did once, but I do it at home now. It's slightly uncomfortable. I bought, I'm scared to do it, right? <laughs> I don't want it to hurt. Oh gosh, I'm gonna do some research on it. China, right? I feel the same way. <clears throat> yeah, it just becomes I like I'm just so over, I guess, the higher YouTubers or the people who do all of the editing and all of the fake stuff. And, you know, it, it, people are coming to you for tips. Okay, and I would hate to be the person who said, Oh, yeah, honey, just put six pounds of concealer under those eyes. I had somebody I watched, and I will not say the name on YouTube, who told their viewers that they could get rid of their under eye bags, not dark circles, bags. So the puffiness, the physical puffiness, with just caking on concealer. <sighs> I had to take a step back. You cannot get rid of puffy eyes by caking on concealer. That takes something like either cooling or some kind of cream to make it go down. It's a physical thing. Now, dark circles, you can get rid of those with makeup. Actual physical bags under the eyes cannot be removed by makeup. You cannot remove moles by makeup. Like, look at this. This is a full coverage foundation, and my mole still comes through. I don't know how it happens. It just does. Um, so there's just so many things that I think get misinterpreted, or there's a disconnect somewhere with people, like the viewers versus the creators. So I try to keep it as honest and realistic as possible, um, and I really just don't understand where why other bigger youtubers cannot do that and i get it money is involved you need to make your money but at the same time i would feel really bad if i sat here and promoted that icy fantasy palette from morphe knowing what it did and how it performed yes it's only 25 dollars, but coming from a person who works hard to earn her money and i would just be so upset if someone was like yeah 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 this palette is so awesome. Buy it, buy it, buy it. And then come to find out it was crap. So <coughs> my goodness, I'm just really big on being able to tell the difference between Instagram and reality. Reality is most Instagrammers do not wear all of this makeup. All of this makeup you see on my face, as soon as I turn this camera off and I turn these lights off is coming off of my face. That's it. That's how it is. I will wear it. I wear makeup every day. Um, whether it be a little bit of makeup or like this for Instagram or YouTube or whatever. But I can tell you more than, more than 89% of the time, you ain't going to catch me like this in public. And not that I don't like it. I do. I think I look fantastic. But it's a lot. It's a lot to wear. It's a lot to wear to work. You can't touch things. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't, you know what I mean, you touch your face or if it gets itchy or it gets cakey and you're always fixing and fixing. So it's just not realistic. And then I can't do my eyes like glammed up like this without doing a full face of foundation and blush and all that. I don't know why. I've never been able to do that. Like if I were to do my eyes and walk out the door without brows or foundation on, I would be like, what the heck is wrong with you? Go back inside, go back inside. So I, if I do one thing, I have to do it all. So the most you'll see me on a daily basis is a lipstick. Um, I can make a video for you guys. I've seen them before where I do like half face, Instagram, YouTube, and then half my face, what I actually wear. And you would see the difference and be like, okay, now I get it. People are not walking around with all this makeup on their face all of the time. And if they are, kudos to them. But most of the time, they're not. Um, it's all for the show it's all for the creation it's all for whatever product they're promoting so i just want people to know the difference in 
reality versus what they see on the internet and you know you think that that's a common practice but it really isn't and it kind of gets me upset when I see people who are upset because they don't feel like they're good enough when it comes to makeup and I hear it all the time I try to follow this this tutorial and I'm just crap I'm not good at it and it really hurts my heart because I don't ever want someone to be discouraged from being creative um because they don't think they're good enough because they saw something on Instagram that wasn't really as accurate as it could have been so when people ask me about products or people ask me about how to do this or that I tell them the truth whether it's an ugly truth or not like I'm telling you guys I put a crap ton of blush on just for it to pick up a little bit on camera but if you were to see this in person it would look like somebody slapped me across my face so and I will tell you that I will always tell you that but when it comes to outright lying to people or not being as honest, I guess, as you could be, it kind of irritates me. So I just want to clear those things up that it isn't always 100% accurate what you see. So just take into account the filters, the editing, the lighting, like who, come, look, I have literally two big box lights in front of me and a ring light right now. Right now, watch. Bye. It changes, look at that, immediately the glow on my face is different. It changes everything. So with ending today's live, just keep that in mind that maybe you're not bad at makeup, maybe you're just not good at editing. And you don't have to be. As long as you love what you do, you love the makeup that you put on, and you think it's beautiful, it's all that matters. Because you know what? Who cares? Who cares if you don't look like James Charles facetuned 110% on Instagram? Because he doesn't even look like that. So just remember, have fun with makeup. That's my biggest thing here. My biggest takeaway today is to have fun with it and really just enjoy doing what you do. Like I love makeup and sometimes I'm like, God, I hate this so much. Why is it so difficult? And then other times I'm like, oh, this is the easiest thing I've ever done. So it, it's not just newbies. It's people who have been doing it for years. Um, you just have to be able to separate what's real and what isn't so it's just that is the bottom line so if you guys have any further questions on it or if you need my insight or help on something when it comes to that then just go ahead and let me know below if you're watching it on the replay as always you can comment and join in with the discussion and I will help you guys but I hope you guys had fun I hope that I was entertaining I guess probably not um and again my boxycharm box was crap so I'm probably going to cancel for March. I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm in between. I'm so indecisive. That's the one thing I want to have done. I have a thinner upper lip and I'm getting fine lines or I'm a, yeah. So I'm totally right. I'm totally for fillers. If you want to do fillers and you want to know what people are like, well, you just don't go too crazy. Do whatever you want. It's your face. If you want to have 600 units of freaking Juvederm put in your face, whatever. If you think it's beautiful, then that's all that matters. I don't care. I support everyone's decision on everything they do. Except for extreme photo editing and lying to people you're selling products to. That pisses me off. But when it comes to fillers, overdrawing your lips, contour, whatever. If it makes you happy. I actually want fillers too. I won't lie to you. Um, just lightly to get rid of the lines in my lips. I just want to get rid of the lines. So, you know, I just, I feel like if it makes you happy, I don't care. If the thinnest 90 brows is what you want to wear right now, wear them. Some people can rock them. I cannot. My eyebrows don't do that. <laughs> I like the realness. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It just, that's, it is what it is. And sometimes people, they do take, I guess, my personality as aggressive or what am I looking for Too blunt and that's not how I am at all I just I feel like in a world or community that has become so oversaturated with fakeness it just it's so refreshing to have someone just be like this is how it is that we don't look like this stop telling people we look you don't look like that do you know how many people like even Kylie Jenner and I like Kylie Jenner I have nothing against her people always question me why do you like Kylie Jenner because I do she's never done nothing to me I don't have anything against her 
even she looks a hot mess when she gets on her IG stories with no makeup, no hair done, straight up out of bed. Like you can see her dark circles, her discoloration in her skin, her, she's got texture. So just keep that in mind that none of us look like that in person. Maybe Jeffree Star. His skin does look pretty damn good. But <laughs> all right, guys, I love you. I will have my next video up Tuesday as usual. And just make sure you stop by next Saturday. If you have any more questions, make sure that you comment them and I will get back to them as soon as I can. I'm going to go have a lots of fun with my kids and my nephews because they are over tonight. And thank you all for stopping by. Goodbye, Amanda. Goodbye, Ray. Goodbye, China. Goodbye, Shannon. And tell goodbye Nicolette and goodbye to anybody else that I did not see. I love you all. I hope you, hope you, hope you, hope you enjoyed really sitting here with me. I know that sometimes it can get a little real and it's like, Ugh, but I love you guys and I'll see you later. Bye.